How's it going, everybody? Welcome back to Emerald City Hockey post game live, and congrats on surviving that game. If you watched it, you've earned it. <laughs> yes, you have. Congrats to everybody. You made it through. Uh, that was that was a rough one. Boring and then rough. It was, yeah. I mean, boring, and then as I'm, I'm seeing it in here from Kimberly, having a tiny glimmer of hope thrown at me and then ripped away was the worst of it. Because the Kraken did nothing for the first. 55 minutes of this game like there was nothing from them the entire time and then right at the end rj they start pouring it on they tie the game up only then watch that disappear have a chance to tie it up again and then have watched that disappear into an empty net yeah i mean that's kind of how things have been going for the crack in this season uh and you know at least it it doesn't hurt them, you know, the, the playoffs being out of the picture and uh, avoiding the loser point. If you're going to lose, you might as well lose in regulation, I suppose. Yes, that is the, the silver lining to all of these losses for the Kraken now is just that it does help their draft position, given that ultimately, certainly for this year, that is the more important thing to be focusing on right now is just draft position and the future because this this season – they just don't have it, right? Uh, collecting one out of 10 possible points on the home stand, following that up with this game. I mean, it's clear, RJ, they made more They made more lineup changes for this one, but the result was still the same. It was still just a lifeless performance from the Seattle Kraken. The energy level's not there, and there's just no ability to execute on anything in the offensive zone. Right, lifeless is the right word. I mean, you're just not seeing that that push to win battles to generate extra offense. Uh, this is again, it's a team that's playing like they know they're out of it. They've been eliminated, and they don't have a lot that they can find to play for. Uh, and so that's just gonna muddy any kind of takeaway that you can really have about specifics or lines or anything like that. I mean, on on our live commentary, we were talking in the second intermission that normally we would be all, okay, you know, here's what you draw up. Here's how you get back in this thing. Here's how you try and manufacture some offense. But we just didn't really have faith in this team to be able to execute anything that you would draw up or that you mm -hmm. would come up with to try and win this game. Yeah, it would have been a pointless exercise. And that's yep. it's it's <laughs> upsetting, right? That we're at that point, but we're at that point, right? I don't think anybody could blame us for, for saying it that way. But you know where it wouldn't be lifeless, RJ? Oh, I know one place where it wouldn't be lifeless. Flat stick pub. That's right. That's Let's right. Go. Sponsor of this post game live. Got to get that in there. Try to try to jazz it up a little bit. I'm still super pumped to be heading up there in April for that watch party on April 5th for that Ducks game. That should be a lot of fun. So hopefully the Kraken will play a better game than this one uh, for something like that. But if not, we'll have the watch party and we'll all be able to, to hang out and have a good time doing it. Going to kick off chat here with the super chat from Schultz tanking to the depth, starring the Kraken. That's right. I mean, look, they they look like a team, RJ, that is on board with with tanking at this point. Just just because, again, you're just getting nothing from them. Yeah, that's we've seen what it looks like when this team gives full effort and and when everybody's on board and they're all pulling together. Right? We've seen both sides of it from the crack in this year, and I, it, it's unmistakable which team this is right now. It's I mean, I guess maybe we might as well embrace it. Yeah, no, I think we have to. We're put this in the spot where we have to at this point. It's just unreal to me because like so many, including the game tonight, these are such winnable games, RJ. I've never seen a stretch of games be so winnable and a team just decide flat out we don't want them. Like we don't want yeah. points. We don't want to go for Vegas. The we don't want it. Yeah, Vegas wasn't playing particularly well tonight. I, I didn't think they did very well at all. And, no. and yet the Kraken just couldn't snatch this game from them. No, and credit to Philip Grubauer because he also played a big role in that and he kept this game winnable for the Kraken throughout. I mm -hmm. mean, the goaltending this year has been great, but Grubauer, that was a heck of a game. And especially as I look at the shot chart from this game, RJ, I'll, I'll, I'll hold up my uh, my laptop to show the shot chart on Money Puck here. Let it let it focus. That's a pretty that's a pretty insane shot chart from Vegas there, almost making the Vegas V. And then over on the Kraken side, you get the one goal, the tip in goal from from Jaden Schwartz. And otherwise, it's a whole lot of nothing. It's a wasteland of shot opportunities. We had talked about on live game commentary, the two other decently sized like bubbles that the Kraken have there were shots that missed the net. The Kraken's two biggest scoring chances that didn't go in didn't even land on net. And that's another problem that this team has to deal with is just the fact that they can't make anything happen in the offensive zone. Right. I mean, yeah, we pointed out during the live commentary, you have to at least hit the net on those scoring chances. And 
I just felt like I can't think of another chance besides the Schwartz one. Even those two that were in the slot there that you were talking about, I can't remember them offhand. I see the two bubbles I there. I can't remember when they happened. No, I, the only other chance that really stands out was when Jared McCann shot it right into Thompson's mask. Yep. <laughs> like that's yeah, that, other, that one was memorable. Like, scoring sure. chance that I remember for sure. Uh, Nicole, these these are getting worse and worse. Also, ESPN was barf emoji today. Yes, no, it was great uh, being able to do the live game commentary with all the patrons over on Patreon because we all got to avoid ESPN together. And that was good. <laughs> Yep. Avoid ESPN. Avoid replays of all kinds. Yep. Uh, speaking to some patrons, got Maddie and B here. Well, that definitely was a game. <laughs> well, that was one of the Kraken games of all time, I guess. And then Riley, that's Kraken hockey to a T. It's this is the this is the worst part of it. RJ is like I don't want this to be Kraken hockey, but it is. Yeah, this season anyway, this is what Kraken hockey is. And it's funny, all the different ways that we've we said, you know, that's Kraken hockey, baby, for good, for bad, for anything. It really just works all the time. Yeah, definitely. Riley Houdini for Celebrini. I like it. <laughs> I, like the, I like that. Um, Blue Devil, how is the ESPN broadcast, in particular the video, even worse now than it was when they got the rights back? Yeah, so deviating from the game for just a quick moment, you have the you have the one thing where Jared McCann gets the um, the faceoff violation penalty, which odd penalty to call, but it was technically the right call. Yeah, according to the letter of the law, that yeah, if you use your glove, if you touch it with your glove at all, that's a penalty. Yeah, so it's a penalty, but how ESPN decides to finally show us the replays from a bench cam that's very low quality and at a poor angle, and then they enhance by zooming in on it, and it was the worst quality I've ever seen. I, the regular broadcast angle just had a better view of it, because I went back to look at it to see the penalty. I don't know why they didn't just go with that. I don't either. I don't know why they didn't do that. And then also there was during... just an amateurish quality about the way that they did it. Yeah, it was uh, there was multiple moments of that. And then during the first intermission, when they were talking about uh, they were in studio talking about the Arizona Coyotes and they put up the stadium renders for the Arizona Coyotes. And they're like the craniest, blockiest, pixelated, low quality images you've ever seen. I don't I don't get it. I don't understand how that stuff happens. Oh, it's uh, terrible. Um Sam, I think we're at a stage now where the Kraken themselves need therapy more than us at this rate. I'd personally recommend hydrotherapy since we are an aquatic based team. Couldn't hurt. Couldn't hurt. Yeah. That actually sounds fun. I'd be going, I'd be down with that. Uh, Zoe, three, 15, and three without Vince Dunn. Records looking worse and worse. Yeah, it keeps getting worse. Yeah. It's really, I need Vince bad. Dunn. Uh, Trevor, I'm going Not tomorrow. right now, though. No, that's true. That's, I mean, well, look, we, t we talked about that, um, you know, I think that I think they should realistically, RJ, considering if it is in fact a concussion, just don't play him the rest of the year. There's no point. Yeah, if if what he has is a concussion, of course we have nothing confirmed from the team. But if that's what he's dealing with, shut him down. It's absolutely yeah. not worth the long term risks for these games that don't mean anything. Exactly, uh, Trevor. I'm going tomorrow. I am too, Trevor. Hope to see you there. Feel free to stop by and say hi. I will be uh, just for anybody going to the game. I was going to do like an intermission meet and greet, and then also I will be at the uh, the corner at the top of the section on the Coyote side, uh, opposite the benches. So feel free to stop by and say hi. Uh, Gru should have been pulled on the offensive zone faceoff with two minutes left, tied one one from Striatic. RJ, go off, go off. There you are, Striatic. So I was advocating for this in the live commentary because it's great if you can play spoiler to Vegas but by letting it get to overtime. You're still letting them get a point and helping them out quite a bit. Why not pull the goalie with the game tied? Just go for it. Either you get the win in regulation, you play spoiler, or you lose in regulation. You end up with zero points because you don't want the loser point anyway. That hurts you. So I was in favor of that initially. They kind of the chat kind of talked me out of it a little bit. But I, I went into that, okay, then Hackstall should pull the goalie in overtime. Because if you lose the loser point, so what? It just helps you for draft position. But you, you're so bad in overtime anyway. Just get the four on three, see how it works. Yeah, I so. did not think that it was worth the risk of doing it in regulation because the NHL hammer would fall on any team that does that to obviously tank for draft position. You'd have to worry about just not having that pick anymore. Um, like, you know, in, in recent drafts, they have gotten rid of first round picks, RJ, this league. So I, I would the be worried would about that. It. Yeah, I would. I, I would over time, I think you get away with it. 
I, in overtime, I'm with you because we've well, we've seen it this a couple weeks yeah. ago. We saw that in the in a game, so I think you can get away with it in overtime. Uh, and uh, I did go on the record before it happened, and I said, and it doesn't matter because the Kraken will find a way to lose anyway, and they did. There we go. Yep. Uh, infamous Tolvi needs to sacrifice his stick to the hockey gods to cleanse himself or something. That boy is cursed. What happened to Tolvin and RJ? He was having like such a great season, right? You know, last time these teams were playing each other in these jersey, Tolvin and having a game, and then and then it's just been nothing, crickets for a long time. Yeah. Nope. What do we have here? Does this mean kind of you've, special you've delivery. chosen? I've chosen. You use chosen. <laughs> Okay, so this is my sister, everybody. So sister reveal after the terrible game. Wow, sister reveal. Uh, yes, this is my sister, Abby, who is uh, has chosen, apparently, to go to Michigan State for her doctorate program in geophysics. So I guess but I'm going to have to have start. they have a good hockey team. They do so have a good I'm hockey stoked. team. That is true. So that we have another true. scout now for the Michigan State players we that we can yes. send out. So I guess I'm I'm gonna have to be uh gotta rocking be a Spartan this. Fan now. Yep, I'm yeah. gonna have to be a Spartan fan now. So congratulations. Beat Ohio. <laughs> well, good for you. Congrats. Congrats. Oh, good okay, stuff. Right. Sorry, leave me to it. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. So that is Everyone that is really congrats cool. Congrats chat. Yeah, no, that's really cool. Oh wow, awesome. Felt, thought she was leading that way, but that's that is cool. So yeah, gonna have uh and she already has a jersey. Where did you get the jersey? <laughs> Yeah, what? <laughs> How'd you get it so fast? <laughs> she got a jersey already. Oh man! Yeah. All right. Um. So okay, that was good. I don't even remember what we were talking about before that. Uh, the Kraken, uh, I assume. The, the Kraken, something <laughs> yeah, with them. Yes. The Kraken, something with that. Uh, they should oh, pull Tolvin the goalie it. all the time for the rest of the season. I think something yeah, like yeah. that. Yeah. Tolvin, it. I think it was. Oh man. Uh, well, now the Kraken need to draft the um, uh, the Michigan State defenseman uh, in the first round. Yeah, uh, Belarusian uh, Levishanov. There we go. I'm sure I said that right. Oh yeah, yeah. Draybird in chat with the yeah, yeah. Levishanov yep. for the Kraken time. He's I've, I've already scouted him. I've I've already he's part of the video I'm putting together for the draft eligible defenseman. I would not be upset if the Kraken looked his way come draft day. Big guy, yeah. big guy, little raw, but but big good stuff yeah um, that'd be so actually even before she showed up on the stream maddie was saying in chat the highlight of the night was finding out dylan's relative is also a geologist yeah well, there you go um uh light with the super chat firebirds can clinch the playoffs tomorrow day passes are cheap and shane is playing amazing right now uh that is true if you want to check out the firebirds like that's i think that's where we're at right like we get the kraken games rj and we get them playing I, I mean, they're not great games to watch right now just because the Kraken are kind of struggling. Um, but we've got the the future of the Kraken to focus on. And a big part of that is the Coachella Valley Firebirds who have the second best record in the AHL. Yeah, first class organization all the way. They're developing players in a really good way. Um, I just, I, I want more prospects to go through them and be able to develop through them. It just takes time and we need to be patient about it. But, uh, you know, that is a big part of a successful organization is just the development, especially through the AHL. Yeah. Um, Christian, Autocat and I just got back from visiting the Gundam in Japan and missed the whole homestand. What happened? <laughs> just know you had a much better time <laughs> doing yeah. that. I hope Japan was fantastic. That is my number one like want to travel destination. And um, you're probably better off not knowing what happened <laughs> during the homestand. <laughs> yeah. Just to, don't worry about it. <laughs> yep. Yep. Oh man, it's rough. Nicole, they used the first 55 minutes as a warm up. I, they ca that can't keep continuing, right, RJ? Like, that's got to stop at some point. You'd think. I don't know. I would have thought at some point on the homestand it would have stopped, but I don't know. Maybe Arizona is the, the cure to what ails them. Yeah. Um, Tiger Erna, it was offsides. The diagonal view from center towards the blue line showed it. I rewound and paused it right on the one frame where it showed it. Really feel like the NHL and refs are biased. So we we had long discussions watching those replays, RJ, of the offside situation there for the, the game-winning goal. It ended up being from Kolasar. I don't think there was enough to overturn it, right? It's got to be definitive to overturn it given the call and the ice was a goal, and I didn't see anything like that. Yeah, same here. At first, I thought, because I, I know the diagonal view you're talking about, and when we first saw that on the broadcast, I said, oh, I, 
I think that's offside because it looked like there was a little white between the skate and you could kind of see the puck still on it. But that diagonal angle can't give you anything definitive just because the angles at play, right? You need that straight down the blue line video. And from there, uh, there wasn't a frame that I could see that was definitive. And so, you know, the Golden Knights have the benefit of the doubt on those because they're, the original call was made in their favor. So, I don't know. I, I didn't see enough. Yeah, no, they needed to, they, they needed a, a, a higher speed camera. Cause like it, it's a, those were big jumps between frames. Like they were, like, it were they were, there might've jumps. been a frame in the middle somewhere, yeah, but, uh, but there was a missing frame and there was just not, not anything that was going to help us there. Unfortunately. Um, let's see, Sean, the offense is, and has been anemic. Yes, it is. Yep. Uh, the shot charts are just atrocious looking at this team. And, and I don't know how you fix that RJ. Like the one thing that I have, and again, I've talked about it. I'll talk about it more on the deep dive this upcoming week, but get more, get more net front presence. I don't think you can, you I don't know even one score. I don't think fixes this, right? Like even if Willie Nylander had gone to free agency or if the Kraken land Jake Gensel, I don't know that that's enough to fix this. Right. I think you need more players who will go to the front of the net because you just have Jaden Schwartz. Yep. And he, to great effect, he came back and scored tonight, but you can't count on him being healthy. It's just the unfortunate, yeah. So just the unfortunate reality. You can't count on being healthy. Sorry, accidental click there. Yeah. yeah you, you do need more than that. I mean, we, we saw it too at the end of the game or toward the end of the game where Matty Beneers throws the puck with a few seconds left, net front, and you had McCann and Everly just skate right by the net. They were both behind the net. Yeah. You can't really do any good from back there. And it's just all Vegas players in front. Definitely. Definitely. Uh, Lindsay, I really wanted to play spoiler and keep those shiny tin cans out of the playoffs. Ugh. Come on, Minnesota, St. Louis, Bueller, anyone. Uh, that's the way I was. I was, I was, I'm on board with like the idea of, of, you know, embracing the tank and all that kind of stuff, but not with Vegas and not wearing those jerseys. I, I really didn't want them to have a win in those jerseys over our awesome winter classic jerseys. That's the worst part about all this for me. Yeah. Although I think we can confirm those jerseys just don't work indoors. That is true. Yeah, I guess outdoors. So. They're perfect. Indoors. Not so much. Yep. Uh, Patrick, so my question I was going to ask, I remember Yanni used to always be the guy in the slot net front. Did they make him move since he took so many penalties there? I miss it. Yeah, I, I mean, <laughs> I, I miss it too. I know. I, I don't think anybody told him to move. I just think that he has, and it's just, it's yeah. a bummer. Uh, Sam, also, why does the winning goal have to come from a former T-Bird? And I saw the ending sequence from Maddie and good gravy. He's got to feel sick to his stomach. Double the therapy for him. Um, Maddie had a couple rough plays in this one. He did. Yeah, there were a few that I kind of pointed out, especially in the D zone. Uncharacteristically rough yeah. plays uh, for him in this one tonight. Just, you know, didn't look like himself. Yeah, no, that is unfortunate. When are the Kraken going to bring up Logan Hughes or anyone to add some spark to this offense? We need something to cheer for at this point from CJ. I don't think it's coming. Like, I, I just don't think it is. I, again, you have enough pieces on this lineup that they should be playing better than this, right? And and I, I don't know. I don't, like, who, do, who are you sitting? You just had Bjorkstrand on your fourth line, for crying out loud. Like, they're trying everything, and nothing's changing. I don't know that one guy coming up from the Firebirds will change it either. Yeah, it probably won't. I mean, not if everybody else is going to continue to play like this. It's just it's just that simple. If you don't have the effort across the board, one guy isn't going to going to make that much of a difference. You mean Kale Flurry in the press box didn't help? I know. What, what what's going on? Um, I mean, that's it's cuz that's crazy too. Like the the lineup change that they went with tonight, RJ. There's elements of it I like. There's elements of it that don't make sense to me, including, you know, like I said, having your second best goal scorer this season your second leading scorer on the team from a points perspective on your fourth line yeah and you know what I, I was wondering too maybe he'll just get ice time or kind of double shift with other lines or maybe it's not a true fourth line deployment no uh Bjorkstrand had the lowest time on ice of any Kraken player in this game 934 yeah that's I'm gonna look when is the last time he's had that little ice time in a game I, going into this game, he's been averaging sixteen twenty one for the Kraken, which is and, and what has he done? Like, what has he done to deserve that? Nothing. Of all the guys just, to play, almost none. He's the only is guy on hurt? this. 
unless he's hurt, but he's he he's probably going to end up with over 50 points on the season, and he might be one of only two players to do so, and he'll probably end up with 20 goals on the season and be one of only two players on this team to do so. Yeah. Why why is he being punished? And I know earlier in the season he was the guy that you were moving around and trying to get going and trying to get other lines going by bringing him up, but like he of all people is not the guy to to be doing that with. Yeah. I I'm looking back at just like when the last time he played he had that little ice time in a game is. I'm already back to 2018-19 and I haven't found anything. Okay. Here we go. So, wow, this was just like a Tortorella season or something because yeah, in that season he had um 14 games of under 10 minutes from that yeah. year on in his career. He had none for yeah. tonight. So, you know, again, unless there's an injury, in which case we won't know, probably they won't disclose yeah. that. Um, I guess like in if a that's weird the case, way, then I'm it's hoping totally understandable, case, but we can't but, know. Yeah. Uh, Riley on this trajectory hack has got to be on the hot seat, whether it's his fault or not. The boys are checked out and we have too many games to go. That's a last game of the season type effort. I agree with that, and that's but that's the way that this team has been playing, right? Forget about the fact that you only got one out of ten possible points on the homestand. You've had probably four of your last five games be winnable games that you found the way not to win, including tonight, where this was a Vegas team that did not really look like a Vegas team. They weren't pressing you too hard. The game was one nothing for like forty five minutes straight. You at any point could have tied it. Um, this is just a team that just doesn't look like they want it. And I'm with you. Like that's, that's a dangerous spot to be in for any organization. And I think that it means like everybody has to be on some level of hot seat, including the players. Yeah. I mean, there's just too many games left. If, if there's two or three games in the season, whatever you play it out, it's over, but there's what 14 games left after tonight. Yeah. Yeah. I, it, it's, it's going to look really, really bad if they can't figure something out to just look more engaged. Yep. And Lindsay, only 15 more games of the suffering. It's going to be rough though. Having to watch this version of the team play Anaheim, San Jose and Montreal. Oh my gosh. That's, those are going yeah. to be terrible. Uh, Sean seems like they would play for their jobs if they weren't guaranteed to just keep them. This is what we are locked in for. I guess you can throw a Shane right in, but otherwise, and again, I I'm with you, RJ, you said it yesterday on Twitter. You've said it before. Why would you want to throw Shane right into this? Yeah, like like look at this team, <laughs> look at the effort, look at the, the, the quotes coming out of the locker room. There's nothing good could come from throwing Shane Wright into all this and giving him like his first like, here you go. Here's an actual legitimate, you know, NHL chance you're getting here for the first time. And, and we want you to be ready for next year. Also, just ignore the toxic everything going on right now. Just don't let that affect you. OK, like, no, it's it's terrible. It's a terrible idea. Yeah, and I do think the lack of effort, you know, can be contagious. Not that Shane would catch it or anything, but, you know, it, it is contagious generally. I just think it is harmful to expose young players to that. Yeah, no, you don't want that being part of his first experience, like his first real experience as an NHL player. You yeah. just don't want it. Anthony, how sick of this stuff do you think Grubauer and Decord are got to be screaming help? <laughs> totally. Yeah, they, they could certainly use the help. And I know, like, they're not the kind of guys who would, let that really frustrate him or build him up. They're both the type. They'd be like, you know, I do my job. I control what I control. What happens in front of me? You know, it is what it is. But yeah, they they need more help. It's um, if you had told us, RJ, at the beginning of the season that you would have both cracking goaltenders with, a you know, 917 save percentages and, and 2.5 ish uh goals against averages and the crack it, we'd be we'd be discussing them and tankathon and everything. I mean, what would you have even thought? I would have been like, what, Jared McCann and Matty Veneers both like get out for the year or something? Like, what? how does yeah. that even happen? Yeah, you think it's just something disastrous from an offensive standpoint, certainly beyond what they've experienced this year. I I don't know. Yeah, you again, you're talking about only two guys missing substantial amounts of time, right? And Jaden Schwartz and, and Berkey. Like, <laughs> like, you know, like it's yeah. crazy. It's nuts. Um super big super chat here from julia thank you very much julia most consistent yeah, effort all season has come from you two thanks for always being there to cheer us up you're very welcome julia and it is only because all of you guys are so fantastic all of this community uh whether it be on patreon or here on youtube social media in person all that good stuff because it it helps keeps us 
keep us going for sure, especially when yeah. the year goes this way. For sure. I mean, we, we wouldn't still be doing this, right? If we didn't just yeah. get that great energy boost every game afterwards from, from talking with everybody and just being with this community. Um, it, it really does make it fun and worth doing. And just thank you so much for the super chat, Julia. I like tonight had no business being as fun <laughs> no. as it was for you and I, Dylan, right? No, it was a lot of fun doing the, the Patreon live stream. I know this sounds this starting to sound like a big commercial for Patreon for us, but it was a lot of fun. <laughs> I mean, we were laughing throughout it. Everybody, it was, it was just a really, really good time. And um, that was needed to get through a game like this. Because like I've got to get up at like 6, 6.30 in the morning tomorrow to, to drive out mm -hmm. to Arizona, right? And like if I had to just watch this game alone, <laughs> it would have been brutal. <laughs> like, I, I would have been yeah. like, RJ just handle post game tonight. I get to sleep instead. Oh man, <laughs> we had a, we had a good time. Um, let's see, Lindsay. It's been said before, but Maddie really needs to work on improving his shot this off season. Absolutely. Like next year, there's going to be no excuses. No way. Yeah, I mean, which could be a potentially fun off season for him. Like, how often do as a player, especially a young player, get told, "All right, don't worry about defense as you're developing your game. Just go try and score. Go be a rock star. Figure yeah. that out uh, and have fun with it." Try to be flashy, kid. Like, go, just go for it. Yeah, no, it'd be fun. Uh, Schultz, your live game commentary was a strength last season. What are your stats this season? It's a good question. I don't think we have those offhand. I feel like they um, haven't been great this year, but again, like the Kraken season hasn't been that great. So, yeah, it's it's taken a downturn since the start of this season. Um, let's see if I can pull that up real quick. But yeah, well, we know we know there's a loss here, uh, and then. It's, yes. I think, we're two or three in a row at this point. Yeah. Again, no, that's the way the season's been going. Patrick, don't forget the delay for wrestling. Yes, when talking about all the issues with ESPN, we the fact that we had to start the game 15 minutes late because of college wrestling is the way to go. We did pick two games against the Oilers earlier this season, too. So we've been choosing dangerously, I suppose. <laughs> <laughs> yeah that is true um julia tickets are so cheap right now though i'm planning to go as many games as i can the next few weeks i'll miss it so much when the season ends despite all the pain that is true silver linings right get better draft position and tickets get cheaper as this stuff goes down right like that's yeah. the way it goes <laughs> that is a big silver lining with all this i'm really hoping that a lot of people that otherwise would not get to see kraken games will, will finally get the chance to do so late this season yeah because i know there are a lot of people i've talked to that just it's expensive. Just can't afford to get in the building most nights. Um, I hope they, they take advantage of this time now. Yep. Yep. Uh, Randall, I'm in Vegas walking out of the game. Just want to say I'm impressed with Kraken fan turnout. Lots of blue jerseys and grew chance. Vegas fans, uh, fans around us quite nice as well. That is awesome. Randall, glad to hear that. And yeah, I mean, lots of people, it sounds like are going to be in Arizona for that game tomorrow as and well. i think at least a couple of the grew chants uh came across on the broadcast too i i thought i heard one when yeah. i turned the volume up a little bit and then other people mentioned it in chat yeah yeah no that'll that'll be good um oh cool yeah it's michigan state they won the march madness game see this is weird because none of, no one in my family had gone to a school that had like division one sports before like this is <laughs> Abby getting her doctorate needs to, you know, needs to rescue <laughs> us all here. Um, so yes. Yeah, so, yeah. I got to pay attention to March madness. Now they're in the tournament. I think they were fourth going in the Spartans for hockey. So uh, that'd be cool if we get a, a, a frozen four appearance. Oh. And then next year, RJ, think about it. I get to, I could go visit and then go to like Red Wings games and stuff on the road. Ooh. Yeah. That'd be really fun. This and Hey, in, in the conference now in the big 10 with my alma mater. Yes. Yes, that is true. I know. I I, th I thought about that. I talked with her about that beforehand. I was like, you, you'll have a rivalry with RJ, your schools. Go figure. <laughs> she goes yep. to Michigan State. <laughs> yeah, um, you wouldn't think. <laughs> no, I know. Uh, yes, but good to, good to see all the, all the great stuff um, in here from everyone. Uh, let's see. Uh, Zoe, too bad there isn't some technology we could use to make all these offside calls easier. Chips and pucks. Yep. Let's go. Uh, Sam Ferk has got to 120 points today, at least, and two goals shy of 60 on the year. Think he gets there. Yeah, he'll get there. I don't know, even know how many games left. If he's got a game left, he'll get there. Yep. His video game numbers have no limit. Uh, Julia, taping an iPhone to the boards would give you better quality video than this. 
I just I don't I don't understand. This, I, but I do understand, right? Because the same league delivering us that video quality is the same league that was having to be pushed for college wrestling on ESPN. So it makes sense. Yep. <laughs> it all kind of <laughs> evens out that way. <laughs> oh man. Let's see. Uh great Maddie looks like Gumby out there. Um, Riley with the super chat. Thank you very much. Francis's screen time better be in 25 hours a day. This summer's free agency prey on playoff teams that got rentals and underperform in the playoffs. Yeah. I mean, Ron Francis is going to have his work in RJ, obviously trying to find those, um, those potential trade targets given the free agent class, either that, or it's try to work the value plays, right? Try to find net front players, try to find guys that can generate and create space for the other guys in the lineup. Um, because they should be available. Yeah, they, they should. I mean, at least I, I, I never like it when teams get involved in free agency and it's just a, a breeding ground for mistakes and it happens. But um, I, I think he's really going to have to work the trade market this offseason. More important than free agency, just find those trades. You may have to give up something of value, but I I just don't see the answers in the free agent class. But the trade market, you never know what's out there. Yeah. Um, Lindsay, I'm once again pointing out that we have not won a game since the Davy Jones hat was dropped on the ground. Will that change tomorrow? It's not just that. It's also the Wenberg trade. It's the Everly extension, as Ricky's pointing out. It's a lot of stuff happened. It could be any of those things, or it's the combination of all of them, in which case we probably won't see a win again for like a calendar year. <laughs> yeah, the, the multiple curses all coming together. Um, yeah, the, the Davy Jones hat being dropped, though. People, yeah, people have still brought that up. I know. I Has know. anybody brought it up to the team, though? Not that I'm aware of. I that's like, I hear it on here all the time. I see it on the Discord. Have not heard it once, even just around other media or anyone. I think this community is the only ones who've really, and on Twitter, of course, are the ones who've He's you know, who spotted it. Yeah. I'm trying to think who would be the person to ask about it. Like a player like, or yeah, like because Berkey was the one who dropped it, but I don't feel like it's fair to talk to Berkey about it. No, no, that's not fair. Not it's like the season the keeper, he's had. You don't need to get on you, him about that. Right. Who would you consider like the keeper of the hat on the team? Um, I mean, it... maybe Stucky. <laughs> well, OK, yes. uh, the, the equipment manager. Yeah, the actual be, of, of the players, though. I, I don't know. know. Like, because like, I, I don't know. I, I feel like at this point that that needs to be brought up because if it could be brought to their attention at the very least, right. Cause then maybe they can do something to cleanse the bad stuff going on. Yeah. Well, uh, let's see, Lindsay, the first step to breaking the Davy Jones drop curse is acknowledging the curse exists. I know Lindsay is our mm -hmm. resident expert on how to break yes. curses. Yes. I don't know, I know how we've she talked got that about title, the, but I know she is. We've talked about the major league stuff in, in, in the past, you know, from the movie Major League and, and things before. But like, I, I mean, really Hackstall likes that think. movie. We know that. Okay. There's the end. That is the end. <laughs> yeah. There we go. That's how we get it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Riley, would anyone consider Cartier a letdown this season? I'm uh, not just because he's a rookie, but certainly expected a lot more from him after his AHL stats and playoffs last year. I wouldn't think it's a letdown. I, I think the expectations kind of got a little out of hand for, for Karche given yeah. his playoff performance and everything. I, I don't think that was ever sustainable, right? I, I just don't think long-term. He profiles as a, as a top six player or someone who's going to mm -hmm. be on the first line. He can fill in there in spot duty and do fine because he plays a well-rounded game and he's physical. But this is more or less what I was expecting from him this season, maybe with a little bit better numbers counting stat-wise, but only because I thought the team itself would have scored a lot more goals. Yeah, I think in, in the context of this team, he's doing exactly what, what he probably should be doing. Um, as a guy that that was coming in, you knew he was going to be a bottom six guy for the most part. That's probably what he'll always be. If we're just being realistic about it. Yeah. Um, he is a bottom six role player kind of guy who can, who can flex up when injuries allow it. And, and I think that's what he's provided this year. And yes, I mean, he's shooting at 9% like half of this roster is, you know, he shot at yeah. 24 almost last postseason, right? He wasn't going to keep that up. Um, but I, I think that this is actually kind of realistically where he should be at is is a 10 to 15 goal guy. Uh, so maybe a little bit better than this, but that that's where he's at. He's, he's going to turn 23 here soon. He was an undrafted free agent like those guys very rarely end up top six forwards anyway. 
Yeah. Uh, so funny, funny here. I'm going off of chat here, but just something yeah. I see on Twitter from our, our friend Kate Shefty with Seattle Times asking, what kind of a hat trick is this? Uh, and referring to the three penalties the Kraken took at the end of the game or before the end of the game, you have two delay of game puck over glass, delay of game face off violation and delay of game unsuccessful challenge. I, I'm willing to wager that's never happened before. I know. I, I wonder if a team has got because some there's of those rules no are new too. So I don't yeah. think that's ever happened before. The whole no, three of those a, in the same. There is no game way that's happened team. before. Yay, Kraken, Trailblazers. Let's go. Yeah, if anyone has a good name for that, oh, hat take track, it out of context. Like, what do you even that's call bad. that? Yeah, uh, that's yeah. No, that's. <laughs> so ridiculous i love it you found every way possible to delay the inevitable okay so i, I said if you're happen. gonna lose lose fun i don't know if you're gonna lose lose silly i yeah. guess yeah that, that would be losing silly that would be losing silly um <laughs> that is that is definitely true uh let's see i like um, it the filibuster from sam <laughs> yes there we go <laughs> oh man uh, Sean, I mean, this is what next year will look like, plus a Shane Wright, for the most part. I, I'm starting to think that, especially if things really don't turn around here, RJ, and the rest of the year kind of is this middling, we'll mm -hmm. see a bigger roster blow up than than what we were initially thinking. Yeah, certainly if this continues, and which is, I think it could be a silver lining of this sort of thing continuing. Because I do, I do think the more I watch this team, the more I think they need to move at least a couple pieces that that they still have under contract for next year yeah i i think like the more this happens the more likely a tanif gets moved for sure and potentially a yanni gourd like if it's yeah. going to bring you those are the assets, two that yeah you'll do it it's where the, it's where it is ricky agreeing they have to move out some of the vets stratic who thinks that the team is missing wenberg almost as much as done i mean we've talked about them missing done done being their best player and obviously that's having an effect here. Do you think that, that the Wenberg absence is also playing a role in this? I, maybe I, I certainly wouldn't say as much as done. I think Vince Dunn just, he's their best player this season. I, I think that's just on a whole other level. I, I don't know. Cause you, you look at Wenberg and what he brings, you know, it's that defensively responsible, you know, just player you can put out there in all situations. And I feel like that's not the area of the Kraken's game. Certainly not tonight. That's lacking. Mm -hmm. It's the scoring. I guess where they miss him is almost what he frees up Jared McCann to do, where yeah. you have McCann being able to play wing and not center and those trade-offs, and he does make you a deeper team, and so maybe you're able to win matchups generally that way. But not as much is done, but I do think they are missing Wenberg. I, I think they're missing Wenberg from just the general, you know, although this hasn't even really been a struggle for them, right? They've still been able to be a possession team. There's still a team that can generally move the puck up the ice. It's not like he was really generating that many, you know, high quality shot attempts for them or anything. I, I yeah, I don't know. I, I don't know that having him around would keep the team from being as lifeless as they are. Now, maybe just the fact that you moved somebody sent them down this spiral right? They spiraled and they bottomed out here because you, you moved somebody and you, you sent the message that you had given up on them or whatever. Uh, and so in that sense, it's, it's, you know, the team is missing him, but I just don't feel like on ice wise, he would, he would be making any difference to what's going on right now, because right now the team's low energy and they're not creating any shot attempts. Who does yeah, that sound that, like? That's a whole group problem. Yeah. And it's, <laughs> it's well, also, it's yeah. Wenberg. Like, so yeah. again, he was good, but it, it wasn't like he would be fixing this. He, he wasn't like a Brandon mm -hmm. Tanev type who could wake them all up. So I don't know. Um, Let's see. Pocket Waffles recommending going to a Red Wings game as a visiting fan. Okay. Good to know. Good to know. Uh, definitely looking forward to that. Uh, we need sandpaper and scoring bad. I Pretty much. I mean, Basically. I feel like every team feels like they need that too, though. So that's that's the only problem with it. Yeah. Um, let's see. Uh, I see a... Is there something to go with the... Julia just said, no Dylans. <laughs> so I, don't, I guess I'm out. Sorry, everybody. I got to yeah. go. <laughs> um, I, just, I don't see anything around that. <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> 
Um, I see how it is. It's fine. Uh, Light, I just have such a hard time thinking Maddie is going to be a career shooting percentage of 8%. I feel like he regressed past the norm, and this is, isn't his production. His production isn't going to be like this forever. Um, I agree with the small like caveat of what we're always talking about on here, which is at some point he needs to vary the shot selection up. Yeah, he does. And that just that just needs to change. And if it doesn't, then we might see that continue. But again, he's too good. He's too smart of a player to just keep running to that same wall over and over again. Within a season, that's one thing because it's just hard to change up aspects of your game. But over the course of an offseason, I think he'll he'll make some of the uh, changes that he needs to make. I and I think one of the first steps to that is getting just just shoot the puck more. Just shoot the puck more. Like, come on, just keep going. Like, he doesn't, he has never at, finished a season averaging two shots a game. I feel like if you want to establish and be a first line player who's going to be a two way player, going to be a star player, going to live up to the Calder hype, all that stuff, you can average two shots a game. Yeah, I think so. That's, that's a I reasonable the, goal. I was going to say, it's not an unreasonable ask to finish a season with 164 shots on goal, right? That's yeah, that sounds it sounds bad to say, like, can you just give me that? But that's where we're at. And I, I think that's part of it. Yeah. Um, also, Julia saying the no Dylans was a typo. Oh, OK, <laughs> good. <laughs> <laughs> glad to glad to hear it. Uh, uh, Lindsay, uh, Stratic, I'm betting the hat gets dropped all the time off camera. We don't know that. <laughs> we, d- we don't know yeah. that. We only know that it was dropped once on camera. And look at what happened. Um, let's see seawater ritual to cleanse the hat return it to its oceanic roots from Lindsay that's solid I knew Lindsay would come up with something (laughs) Uh, Steven no player gives a mm about the hat it's a social thing only please never ask a player about the stupid hat do you think that's true yeah, I, I don't think the players really care about the hat too much. I mean, it's there's an object every team passes around or whatever. Yeah, I don't think the players care. It's just something fun. Let's say it's a social thing, but it's fun for us to joke about. It's fun for us to talk about. It, it adds to the you know the storyline and everything. I, I do think you know the, the hat does signify like look when a player gets it, it's because they've done something really important that their teammates respect. Right. Maybe the hat itself isn't super important, but what has what earned the represents. hat often means a lot. Yeah, what it represent means a lot to them. So in that sense that they, they care about it. And I'm telling you right now, hockey players are the most su- superstitious people on the face of this planet. And if you brought it up in the context of superstition, they would all care very, very much about this. <laughs> and they would want to know. Uh, so yeah. I'll just say, Jenna Bruckheimer should buy us a bigger hat? Question mark. That's it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it just needs to be a better hat. <laughs> Um, let's see. Uh, best moment of the game was RJ missing the only crack in goal. Yep. I, I should have left again. <laughs> yeah. My, my stream yeah, and everything, my the... whole internet, everything just cut out. Uh, and I came back and I just saw face off at center and the score was tied. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, yeah, it was, it was pretty good. Um, Sam, I've been monitoring it for a bit, but I'd recommend moving Schwartz as his no move clause becomes a modified, no trade clause after this year. Won't get a lot back, but at least he's movable after this season. I, I could you even move him for anything? I think you'd have to retain. No, salary. I think you would have to pay to get rid of him. That's the problem. If you could move him for free, I think you do that. The problem is the term on that contract and the injury history. He still has two years left. At five and a half, I just don't think that any team's going to want to sign up for that, even for free. So you have to attach an asset going the other way. I don't think Francis is going to want to do that. And I saw someone uh, light saying, yeah, buying Schwartz, buying Schwartz out is the easy thing uh, to do. Uh, you wouldn't want to do it this offseason just because you already have plenty of cap space this offseason. You don't need it immediately. But next offseason, that might be something to look at. Yeah, that would be that would be the the thing to look at um at some point we'll get uh you know to that same situation with the Gerber contract yeah. too i've been looking at that for a while um let's see uh yanni could bring a pinto or some other unhappy younger guy <laughs> could though like i i maybe not maybe not pinto because i don't know that ottawa would would necessarily want yanni gord right now but there are a lot of teams that would take yanni gord in, in their room yeah, and, and throw a younger player who can contribute and, and can be in your lineup yeah. right away. 
Yeah. And that's, that's, I think the bottom line of all of this, right. Is that the Kraken just need to transition and start thinking themselves as, as two years away. I think it was Glenn that brought that up the other post game. Yeah. Um, you know, you start thinking about two years from now as a year five team, not a year, th- you know, three or four team. Um, and, and that let that start informing the decisions that are made. It's realistically what, what, they should have done at the trade deadline, right? They should have been open to Tanev. They should have been open to Yanni Gord, where a team could get multiple playoff runs with Yanni Gord. You get a much better return from that. Um, but I just think because it happened before this awful, the awful homestand, and now this, they were just they. There's no way for them to know that was going to happen. Yeah, the the timing was brutal, as you kind of predicted to me when we talked privately about it. Like, you know, they're going to win a bunch of games right up to the deadline, and then drop a bunch, and they kind of gone ahead and done that. I even I didn't think it would be this bad though. I mean, this is ridiculous. Now you said four in a row they would lose. This is, this is more <laughs> this than that. a lot more than that. Uh, okay, how about those Nashville Predators though? What a wagon sheesh! Why why use it all up before the playoffs even get here, RJ? I, I don't know what Nashville's doing. <laughs> yeah, I, I the hell of a not first round time. exit coming, everybody. <laughs> yeah, just, I mean, doing. you can't control these things. Although if they didn't do it now, they might not be in the playoffs. So. Yeah. Um, Byron, are we still on the don't shoot at the same spot on the goalie thing with Maddie Beneers? Yes, definitely. Yes. Yeah, with Maddie. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Riley, we got to try and go after teams overflowing with blue chip prospects like Buffalo or guys that are just sick and tired of being on trash teams, i.e., Ottawa and Columbus, Afrosheet, Stutzla, or Kachuk or something. Um, I, I I'm fine with that. I think an offer sheet is the way to go. For well, those, those contracts don't end for a while, yeah. though, don't, right? Uh, well, yeah, Stutzla definitely had the extension, but I, I just in general, the idea of an offer sheet, I know we had joked about it with Pedersen offer sheet, somebody, cause that you have a way of, like, that's, that's the only Avenue for one of these guys. If you're the crap. Yeah. You just, you just can't do it this off season because there's nobody worth offer sheeting. <sighs> See, I hadn't even been, I wasn't even looking at that. I was holding out hope that there would be somebody. How is there nobody available this off season, RJ in free agency? I- Including restricted teams, free. teams resign good players. That's just that's how it works. Why though? All contracts should be a maximum length of four seasons, and they're forced to go to free agency afterwards. I I would Who have said the no? same thing. Who said <laughs> oh, no? Yeah, I, was say, I would have said the same thing ten years ago because that was Doug Wilson's mo before he <laughs> changed everything. <laughs> oh man! Uh, reminder that Wenberg and Schwartz were two of our. Or were our two original free agents beware the free agency hype draft or trade for talent instead yeah i mean that that first off season the three guys you signed in free agency was alexander wenberg jaden schwartz philip grubauer yep i mean look just about every free agent signing that ron francis has made has been a mistake mm-hmm. you know i schwartz okay because he's been able to stay healthy somewhat wenberg you know, uh, underwhelming for what they signed him for. Grubauer, you know, we know what that is. Burakovsky has been able to stay healthy. I mean, I feel like Brian Dumoulin has actually been, may, might be Francis's best UFA Yeah, Justin, Justin Schultz never really fulfilled the role we were hoping he would fulfill. And this year has been bad, like just straight yeah. up um, and, and clogged up things for Riker Evans. Yeah, there's, there's a good argument to be made there. Yeah, I think you're onto something. Versus, I mean, he knows that he hates free agency. He talks about it how how much yeah. the two days that scare him the most, the trade deadline and, and July first. He yeah. doesn't like to do it. No, Yamamoto, um, and and Belmar would be like the other two, right? To, to throw in there, uh, versus yeah. all the moves that he's made via trade or or something else, right? Like those have yeah, generally they, panned out a lot better. A lot better, for sure um let's see year five was always the target beats vegas by a year possibly rick you say it yeah no it's definitely the 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 target at this point um let's see sam i wouldn't call Wenny bad as he eventually figured out a role as our shutdown center was definitely overpaid but was still serviceable and got assists back arguably the best signing of the three i would probably agree with that too yeah i think it was the best and the key on that was that the term wasn't too long Mm mm-hmm Yes. If that had another year on that deal, we we would be looking at it in a different light. Yeah, definitely. Um, Byron, I still think Maddie's struggle scoring have a lot more to do with where he's shooting from than where he's aiming. Look at his shot maps. I'm I I will trust you on that one, Byron. I'm sure they are atrocious. Because again, yeah. he doesn't I think shoot. I think it can be both. 
Oh, well, yes, there's just room for both. I mean, obviously, yeah. he's got 10 goals this year. Like, it's not good yeah. no matter what. But, ugh. um, Let's see. Marner might be available if when the Leafs flame out. Interesting option. If he's available at any point, yeah. You, you the problem is they just, they just double down on that core by re-signing. They did. They're, they have to bring him back. He was the guy that they could have gotten rid of, and they did. Yep. Uh, uh, Vegas really upturned the apple cart for expansion teams, both since the 90s uh, take at least five years to be a playoff team. Yeah, and it was really it was the change in the rules that, that did. Yeah, the, that the rules are different, and it. now you, you have enough assets to be a contender right away. Yeah. Um, let's see. Uh, you forgot Donato. He's our best free agent signing. Oh, okay. Yeah. I guess best July free agent signing. I'd have to do that. Cause like they brought in Sprong late too. I mean, they actually, they traded for him. Never mind. They traded but it for looked Sprong. like he, yeah, they, they brought him. They brought they bring him on a back. PTO though afterwards. Yes. Yes. Season two last year, he was on a player tryout contract for the, for the preseason. And he ended up going in. Um, so yeah, that's that's it. Uh, and then Zoe hold out hope for Barzal. That's who I've been saying. He's the one. He's the one. And yeah. again, he makes no sense for the Islanders if he's looking at it. His prime is just going to be used up with a bunch of garbage rebuilding years there. At some point, he's got to wake up and see the light. RJ, right? I, well, that's I've been rooting against the Islanders in these games at the end of this season. They just lost to Detroit tonight pretty handily. So uh, more of those. It's what's weird is I haven't heard anybody say that he is looking at maybe leaving or anything like that. No, I haven't heard anything to that effect. So <laughs> he has a no, he has no, no trade clause though. How does he not have a clause in that contract? I think it kicks in um, next season. Oh, okay. I was just looking at the team. Oh yeah, it does. I was just looking at the team page. I'm like, what? <laughs> like who does that? <laughs> No. Well, uh, I think, mean, hey, you know, you just if you want to trade him <laughs> off the Islanders, go for it. Yeah. Uh, light with the super chat to to remind us that Luke Henman was our first free agent and no one can say it wasn't a good one. I'm not saying it. I'm not saying it either. Uh, no one can say it wasn't a good one. OK, I'll 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 say it. It was a bad one. <laughs> No, okay. yeah, look, he you, did. You no, 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 he he did exactly what he was supposed to do, which was like he was a guy who was essentially, you know, an undrafted guy in essence, even though he wasn't. Um, and he was never going to be an NHL or. Yeah, he's not. That was just always the case. Yeah. So, yeah, in that sense, it, it served the function. It gave everybody a player to be excited about. There was a member of the organization prior to the expansion draft and all that kind of stuff. Um, it was a great moment for him. I'm sure he's been able to have a nice AHL career out of it, which, to be perfectly honest, I thought was questionable at the time. I think I, we even yeah. talked about that on some of the early He did podcasts. drop into the ECHL for a bit. Yeah. Yeah. So um, in that sense, no, it has it has been a good signing as as far as like him just, you know, he wasn't going to be a thing, but the fact that he's still with the organization as Sam's pointing out means that it was successful. Yep. Um, Tavares is slower than rush hour traffic. Oh my gosh, he is totally. Oh yeah. Riley saying could see Francis helping the Leafs and taking on the Tavares contract for the last year of his deal. We could, we would be one of the few teams with, with cap space, RJ. Yeah, actually you have the cap space to do it. I mean, of course they'd have, the, the problem is they'd have to sweeten the pot with, well, something yes. right yes. i don't know what what you're do you ask getting, you're what getting you an for? asset back i mean they have a first round pick so you're you're getting that right yeah you're, you're get you're getting that i mean i ideally would want you want you know, a, prospect a prospect or someone ideally. who could help closer to right away but there's nobody who's any good no who there. Be willing to move. yeah no like the, you're not getting anybody there so um It'd have to be the first round pick. It would have to be the first round pick, but otherwise, I mean, that wouldn't be the worst thing in the world. If it's no. going to be a loss, do you think anyway, you'd have to take on full freight? Like, or could you? Would they retain anything and still give up, the, give up the first? They would not give up the first if they had to retain anything. I feel like, C considering they don't have a second or a third, and they don't have a first next year, or a second or a third next year, and they don't have a second the year after that, they are only giving up that first if they get all eleven million off the books. That's a lot of money. I mean, because like we we've seen a first one go year. for five million. We've seen a first go for one year of five million. Remember the Marlowe deal? 
That's true. And 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 Toronto would be pretty desperate. Yeah, they'd they'd be desperate. I think they'd you could very for desperate. eleven million, I think you could get a lot if you really press. Yeah, them. that's true. You could probably get the first in a prospect if you're taking the full eleven. Um here's the yeah. other thing though. Would he move would he get rid of the no move clause? No. Uh, no. I think that's a non starter there. I think he's just not waving it at all. Why would you? Yeah. Oh, that's what everybody's just saying in, in chat. Uh yeah. yeah. No, that's that's true. Um I mean, why would you? Because you're going to be the villain all of next year. Everybody's just going to hate on you all the time. I don't know. Are they? Are they? You're not, getting then... paid no matter what, right? Like if you go somewhere else, you can. You, you know, if he came to if he came to Seattle, he would be the first like superstar player the Kraken ever had. Yes, he's in the twilight of his career and he's a shell of what he was before, but he's a, he would at least be like a guy. You know what I mean? Yeah, I mean, he, he chose to go to He'd his hometown be the over, best. like winning a Stanley Cup or anything. I think that means more to him than anything else. Yeah. He would also low-key, even though he's like super not what he was, he would be the best player on the Kraken. He'd be up there. Forward-wise, anyway. Yeah. He's, yeah. Got 20, he's got 23 goals and 54 points this year. I know what the crack would get for someone with those numbers. <laughs> That'd be pretty high up on this Kraken roster. <laughs> Just saying. Yeah. Sam saying, yeah, Tavares is used to it. He's asked the aisles of being hated. Yeah, that is true. That is very true. Um <laughs> media would certainly care a lot more about Seattle. I don't even know that they would. No, they just they just forget about him. Yep. <laughs> Gosh. Oh, what a world, what a world, RJ. As we, as we, I think we could just go ahead and wrap up post game. I think so. You got to get up early. Yeah, I got to get up early and get get on the drive out to Arizona. Uh, want to thank Flat Stick Pub one more time for for joining us. Um, again, Dylan, yeah, I made the graphic. Graphic, you made the graphic. There we go. There we go. Uh, so yeah, super excited for that April fifth watch party at that South Lake Union location. Can't wait for that one. Uh, and then to meet up with everybody there. Can't wait to see everybody in Arizona tomorrow. Um, that should be exciting. And, you know, we'll see if, uh, if the Kraken, you know, remember how to win a game, RJ, because I'm starting to question it. Hey, you know what? You're in the building. I, I like their odds. We'll see. I don't have a great track record with them in that building. So <laughs> it's, we'll see. <laughs> okay. Okay. I, I think they got one point, one point out of the two games there. It'd be an improvement. <laughs> That's true. That is true. Um, All right, everybody. Thanks so much for joining us. We'll see you all next time.